This is Lil Pete uh -huh. from 357. Yeah. Sweet LD. Uh huh. Terrible T. Uh -huh. After posting our MC Hammer video, we started to wonder about some of the acts that were affiliated with him in the late 80s and early 90s, like Oak Town's 357. You remember them, right? They started out as his flashy backup dancers and later gave us a few hits like Yeah, 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 Juicy Got You Crazy, and Turn It Up. But after releasing two studio albums, 357 disappeared, and we finally know why. This is a story about an alleged strict environment. A lot of verbal abuse, I would say. And rumors that they weren't even getting paid for all of their hard work. We were not getting paid for rehearsals. We were not getting paid for local shows we were doing in the Bay Area. We were not getting paid. Before we get into today's video, don't forget to grab something to eat at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of buffalo wing popcorn, brisket, bacon, and turkey jerky, and butter toffee peanuts. Suela Sabir, better known as Sweet LD, was at her favorite spot, Silk's Nightclub in Emeryville, when she noticed a guy doing a mean old cabbage patch on the dance floor. She was a dancer as well, so she knew how to do the move, but she just didn't know how to hit it like that guy was hitting it. She didn't approach him at the club, though. Instead, she waited until the club closed, and then she and her friend followed the guy and his friend to a nearby gas station. She got out the car and approached him and asked, Hey, can you show me how to do that cabbage patch you were doing? Of course, the guy was Hammer, and his friend was Ace Juice. You remember him, right? He and Hammer looked like twins. Ace even told Black Radio Excellence magazine that his own mother had a hard time telling the two of them apart. Anyway, not only did Hammer show LD how to bust the move, but he told her to meet him at a club a couple weeks later. While there, he asked her and her friend Carla if they wanted to appear in his upcoming music video. LD told From the Ground Up Productions she was under the impression that she and her friend would just wear some cute outfits and be in the background of the video as eye candy. So when Hammer told her she needed to show up for rehearsals, she was confused. According to LD, Hammer didn't make it clear that he wanted her to be a background dancer for the video and perform a routine. And not only that, the video wasn't even close to being in production when LD started rehearsing. The rehearsal started out with LD, her friend Carla, and Ace Juice. Several lineup changes soon followed until the core background dancers were Ace, LD, Phyllis Lil P. Charles, whom Hammer had met at a club on an Oakland military base, and Tabitha Z. King Brooks, also known as Terrible T. Terrible T told Soul Train's YouTube channel that Hammer's brother and manager, Louis Burrell, had an office, and he allowed the dancers to practice in one of the rooms. All of them, including Hammer, were club dancers. But when it came to performing, he introduced them to a different perspective according to how he wanted to present his show. LD told Dusty Vision TV they would rehearse between 6 to 12 hours per day. They gave 100% during practice, whether Hammer was there or not. Sometimes they wouldn't even stop to eat, and LD claims they weren't getting paid either. They were accompanying Hammer to radio interviews, performances at schools, and taking pictures with his fans. Meanwhile, they weren't making a dime. When Hammer opened up his troop clothing store, the dancers started working there as well, and according to LD, that was the only time they got paid. LD said when they needed money for outfits, they were told they had to figure it out on their own. They were constantly fighting for respect and support within Hammer's organization, and it proved to be an uphill battle. As Hammer saw his vision come to life, he added more components to his performances. There would sometimes be over 30 people on stage, including the posse, background singers, his hype man Kevin Too Big MC Wilson, and Kevin's brother Kent, better known as Lone Mixer, Hammer's DJ. But LD, Lil P, and Terrible T always stood out for their beauty, their hairstyles, their cute outfits, and their ability to hold their own alongside Hammer. Hammer launched Busted Records, and with his connections as a bad boy for the Oakland A's, he borrowed $20,000 each from A's outfielders Mike Davis and Dwayne Murphy. After Hammer was slow to repay them, they filed a lawsuit, and Hammer eventually settled with them out of court. But that's another story for another day. 
In 1986, Hammer recorded his first official single entitled Ringham and a follow-up track called Let's Get It Started. From there, he partnered with Felton Pilot of Confunction and recorded his first album called Feel My Power. Hammer and his wife Stephanie pushed the album to local DJs, which helped them sell about 60,000 copies, and that was great for Hammer's independent label. In May 1988, Hammer and his posse attended a showcase at Oakland's Oak Tree Cabaret. A woman by the name of Joy Bailey, who just so happened to be an executive in the A&R department of Capitol Records, was also in attendance. When Hammer walked past her, she was intrigued. She told Rolling Stone she didn't know who he was, but she knew he had to be someone important. That meeting led to Hammer getting invited to Capitol's headquarters, where he proceeded to turn that mother out with his dance moves and a detailed business plan. Eager to get a piece of the emerging rap market, Capitol offered him a multi-album record deal and a $750,000 advance. After landing the deal with Capitol, Hammer re-released his first album, added a couple more tracks, and renamed it Let's Get It Started. The label also wanted him to develop other acts, so he brought Ace Juice, Special Generation, Joey B. Ellis, and B. Angie B. into the mix as his artists. With female acts like salt and Peppa and J.J. Fad taking over the charts, Hammer decided to form his own girl group as well. Since he already knew LD, Lil P, and Terrible T and their excellent work ethic, he put them together and gave them the name Oak Towns 357. Oak Town was in reference to their hometown, and the 357 was in reference to a magnum and the ladies' explosive stage presence. But after the Capitol deal was in place, several people claim Hammer changed. Dante Newman, who was Hammer's bodyguard and Lil P's husband, told Rolling Stone he never allowed anybody to curse around him, but as soon as he got that check from Capitol, everybody was a bitch and a ho. Terrible T and LD both confirmed that there was a lot of verbal abuse towards men and women from people within Hammer's organization. But both women insisted that Hammer didn't speak down on them, and it was other people in the organization that were talking to them recklessly. They were also shut out from the entire entertainment industry. Many people thought they were stuck up and had an attitude, but that wasn't the case. They just weren't allowed to have connections with anyone else. They also weren't allowed to dance for other artists. Terrible T and LD found out years later that Janet Jackson really wanted them to dance with her, but Hammer's organization told Janet, nope. In April 1989, Hammer and the entire posse were booked to appear on the Arsenio Hall Show. LD alleges that while on their flight, the posse, the DJs, Two Big MC, and 357 were each given 300 to 400 page contracts to sign. According to LD, they were told that if they didn't sign the contract by the time the plane landed in Los Angeles, they would be sent right back home. LD said that by that point, she had invested too much time. Even though there was no one on the plane to advise her on what she should do, and there wasn't a lawyer present to look over the document, she signed it anyway. She told From the Ground Up Productions that she planned on getting a copy of the document at a later date so she could have someone look it over, but she was never given a copy. After appearing on the Arsenio Hall show, someone from the show gave them each an envelope full of cash. LD said it was the first time they had received any form of payment, and the money didn't come from Hammer, it came from the Arsenio Hall show as an appearance fee. LD told Dusty Vision TV that they couldn't believe the show paid them to dance for three minutes. Meanwhile, they had been dancing for Hammer for months and months, and he hadn't paid them at all. That's when LP decided she was out. Her husband Dante, who was working as Hammer's bodyguard, also quit over a money dispute. Several other members of the posse were fed up with the strict rules and the lack of pay as well. A few dancers and backup singers told Rolling Stone that all members of Hammer's entourage had to return directly to their hotel rooms after each show or they would be hit with a $100 fine. Hammer claimed the rule was in place to protect them from getting in trouble. So you find yourself being somewhat of a father on the tour, a strict dad? I don't want to ever have to call somebody's mother or father and say, I got bad news for you. They found your 
daughter this morning uh, dead on 10th Street. Lone Mixer and Too Big MC left the organization sometime around 1990. Word was getting out about the alleged working environment, and in June 1990, an anonymous person sent a four-page letter to Rolling Stone's Los Angeles office. A portion of the letter said, Hammer once told us if anyone ever told the news or anyone about everything going on, they would be sorry. I have risked my life to get this letter to you. I must go now. Please help us. LD told Aced Out Podcast she and Terrible T had to regroup. She added, We determined between the two of us that we would stay and that we would work well enough together to make them change their minds about how they treated us. To this day, LD says she can't stand it when people say Hammer took care of everyone. I'm trying to figure out who did he take care of mm. because I wasn't laying on my back. I wasn't lazy. I wasn't asking him for money. We worked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Everybody worked. You know what I mean? So, mm. yes, he made that kind of money, but he took care of no one like that. As we now know, Hammer filed for bankruptcy in 1996, and aside from his lavish spending, he also went on the record to say he was financially taking care of too many people. But apparently, the people on his payroll didn't include 357. Okay. Oaktown's 357 debut album, Wild and Loose, was released in 1989. Hammer reportedly told media outlets he wrote most of the songs on the album. But LD confirmed to Dusty Vision TV that she and her group members co-wrote the tracks, since Hammer couldn't write from a female's perspective. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah was the first song released, and when it came time to film the music video, Hammer brought in two more women as stand-ins to film alongside LD and Terrible T. But as for the video for Juicy Got Your Crazy, LD and Terrible T took center stage. Their suggestive lyrics, their sex appeal, and their flawless dance moves set them apart from other female rappers, and the video became a fixture on MTV and BET. Oak Town's 357 went on tour with Hammer and still performed as his background dancers as well. This meant the ladies had to memorize two sets of choreography. They would put on intense, high-energy performances, run backstage to change their outfits, and then get right back on stage to dance with Hammer. No wonder their bodies were looking nice and tight. Ew. In 1990, along with Hammer and other influential West Coast artists, 357 appeared on the anti-violence track, We're All in the Same Gang. Then they jumped back in the studio to record their second album entitled Fully Loaded. It was released in 1991 and included the singles Turn It Up, Honey, and It's Not Your Money. Sadly, Capitol didn't promote the album as they should have. 357 was getting ready to go out on a promo tour when they received a phone call to meet up at the rehearsal studio. When they arrived, they were told that because of a dispute between Hammer's Busted Records and Capitol Records, they were getting released. Terrible T said they were absolutely confused and defeated. Terrible T attempted to keep her career on track, but she was so used to having LD by her side, she didn't know how to function as a solo artist. She got a 9-to-5 job, but that proved to be difficult as well because she wasn't used to working a typical job. Because Hammer's organization kept them so shielded and cut off from other people in the industry, she didn't have anyone else's phone number. She lost all of her connections. But thanks to social media, they were able to reconnect and have since performed once again, including on the Tom Joyner cruise. In 2014, Oak Town's 357 received the Pioneer of Hip Hop Award at the Hip Hop Honor Ceremony, and LD and Terrible T also got the chance to perform some of their hit songs on stage. What Oak Town's 357 did for hip hop is something that no one can take away from them. LD told Aced Out Podcast, we created something and shared it with everybody in the world. And today, they still look at us as someone who changed the dynamic for women in hip-hop.